let's take you inside of Mar-a-Lago. Trump, Elon, and God bless America. You can say the vibes are high at the Winter White House. And 47 says it's only the beginning. You just had a big victory. You may have read about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, setting records with practically every voting group, every voting class. They say most consequential win in the last 129 years. What's that all about? That's a lot. I just wanted to win. <laughs> to be that much. I just so much winning. But we did. We're not tired. Yeah, too much winning. Too much winning. Is there any such thing as too much winning? No. So we have to win now as a country. And it's official. The Republicans have captured the House. Democrats are shut out of power everywhere. And now another Trump could be going to Washington. Nope, not Barron. Yet, Laura Trump could be Florida's next senator. When Rubio leaves for the State Department, DeSantis gets to pick his replacement. And Lara says she's into it. Now, while Congress shapes up, Trump's nominating people at warp speed. Just in. RFK Jr. has been tapped to be Secretary of Health and Human Services. Trump says RFK will make the department follow the science, not the money, be beacons of transparency, end the chronic disease epidemic, and make America healthy again. Maha. For 19 years, I have got every morning, without one exception, I have said a prayer to God to put me in a position where I could end the chronic disease epidemic. <laughs> On August 23rd of this year, God sent me Donald J. Trump. Big Pharma, Big Sugar, watch out. Certain stocks dropping like rocks the moment he was picked. RFK is going to clean house. Doritos, Cheez-Its, Cap'n Crunch, gummy bears. Everyone knows that these are junk foods, so maybe you wouldn't be too surprised to see that the ingredients include a lot of poisons, including a harmful yellow dye called tetrazine, or yellow dye number five. What you may not know is that this dye was originally made out of the sludge that's left over when you turn coal into coke for blast furnaces. It's called coal tar, and I've actually sued many big industries for legacy contamination of coal tar all around the country because it's so toxic and it's so harmful to the environment and human beings. If we took all of these chemicals out, our nation would get healthier immediately. We'd have fewer sick days. We'd have better focus. We'd have less anxiety. Our kids would learn more easily. We'd lose weight. We'd have more energy. We'd have fewer tumors and longer lives. They poison our food and then sell us pills. We get sick and they get rich. RFK wants us to eat clean, and he's ready to ax corrupt government staff on day one. TV doctors are worried we're not going to need them anymore. It's not often that the, the entire medical and public health community is going to be in lockstep on something, but they're pretty close on this in terms of their uh, significant concerns, uh, horror even. Uh, somebody said to me today, I can't think of any single individual who'd be more damaging to public health than RFK. There are career staff texting me saying this was just the push they needed to try to get out. They were already on the fence and worried. So we're not just going to see this incredible kind of you know, integration of ideology that has no science behind it. America is the sickest country in the entire developed world. And TV doctors are happy with the status quo. Three quarters of American adults are overweight or obese. It doesn't have to be this way. America should be the healthiest country. Our food's so toxic, we're not even allowed to sell it in Europe. We all started getting sick and fat in 1990. That's when they added ultra-processed food to the food pyramid. Doctors began prescribing everyone pharmaceuticals, and everyone got a desk job and stared at a screen all day. Have you been to the beach recently? We used to be a lot skinnier. The government let the food and drug industry turn us into Jabba the Hutt. And they say RFK is dangerous. These people should be brought up on child abuse charges. 
I saw an elementary school class walking down the street in Midtown yesterday. Looked like the Cowboys offensive line. The Army can't even recruit. They had to lower their standards because everyone was too big and slow. Show me a 70-year-old who can do this. Now, this is the most powerful woman or man at Health and Human Services, Rachel Levine. Would you consider him or her healthy and fit? RFK Jr. would oversee agencies that lied about COVID and told us to hide from a virus that spreads inside. Why are Democrats so bent out of shape about a ripped 70-year-old wanting to take food coloring out of Doritos and go for a hike once in a while? This guy wants clean water and fresh fruit, and Democrats are calling him crazy. RFK Jr. is saying, let's diet and exercise, and the left saying, no, 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 stay inside, eat takeout, and inject Ozempic. If anyone tells you that's healthy, they're the threat. Trump's mandate was to make America healthy again, get DEI and CRT out of the Pentagon, and fire the spies who lied to us. If you're against that, you just outed yourself. The choice of Tulsi Gabbard as DNI is not in the best interest of the American people. It's not in the best interests of our national security. This is so extraordinarily dangerous. Being a, a serviceman, it does not make you qualified to lead the Department of Defense and to have access to our nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm very disturbed by this. This guy is clearly a sycophant for Donald Trump. The attorney general sees the most sensitive intelligence in the government. He's threatening to blow up the department and has accused it of being corrupt. And there's a real fear inside the Justice Department that he or people like him would, uh, would order uh, investigations where there was no predicate, where there was no crime. So the CIA and Wall Street are going to be putting up a big fight over Trump's cabinet. Big. The country voted for change, and they're going to try to stop it. It's not just about eliminating their power, profiteering, and corruption. It's about exposing what they've done. Like the Department of Justice, who spied on Trump, raided his house, arrested him, and covered up for the Bidens. They're acting like the Gates nomination could break them. The headline in Politico, you thought the DOJ staffers were in a full-blown freakout before? What the F is happening? OMG, I'm struggling to find words. Why are they surprised that Trump wants a reckoning at DOJ? The department that covered up Epstein, Diddy, and both Trump assassination attempts. Who did you think Trump was going to put in charge there? Tulsi, Hegseth, Gates, Kennedy, Washington's worst nightmare. Sources inside the Pentagon say the mood's dark, feels like a morgue, and they're worried about a shakeup. Every single person that was elevated and appointed by Milley will be gone. The State Department's so scared of change, they're emptying their bank accounts and sending all their money to Ukraine. President Biden is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be pushed out the door between now and January 20th. These people weren't scared that Trump's a fascist. They're scared that he's effective. Washington looks like a bunch of scared teens trying to clean up their rooms before dad comes home. And everyone's being polite. You know, you don't want to get on his bad side. What happened to the threat of democracy talk? What happened to the fascist talk? By the way, I know I've said those things about Trump as well, but I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about his political opponents like President Biden. When they say it, it holds way more weight than me. I'm just trying to figure out how do you go from he's an existential, existential threat to democracy. So welcome back. <laughs> Trump's picking firebrands to tear down the system that tried to destroy us. Fetterman calls it karma. I would describe it as god tier level trolling to just trigger a, a full-on China syndrome uh, to own the libs in perpetuity. If the Republicans stick together, there's nothing anybody can do about it. We have everything they want that we want, everything we voted for, everything we were promised. So you're going to see an avalanche of leaks and lies about these nominees to break the will of the Senate. And if the Senate loses its nerve, then the will of the people loses.
waste, losers! <laughs> Happy Thursday, everyone. It's official. The Republicans have clinched a majority in the House of Representatives. <laughs> In response, the Democrats have clenched a majority of their buttholes. <laughs> buttholes. The greatest word in the English language. President Biden sported a big grin while welcoming Trump back to the White House. Some say it's a sign that Joe is enjoying a peaceful transfer of feces into his pants. <laughs> you knew it was going to go there. <laughs> When asked how she's doing, Nancy Pelosi responded, terrible. Now, maybe because of Trump's win or the fact that her new face is on back order. Jesus. John Thune is replacing longtime Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell. Mitch plans to return to his home on the Galapagos Islands. <laughs> Turtle. The food delivery app called Wonder just bought Grubhub in a $650 million deal. The deal it includes the world's most famous delivery driver. <laughs> so far, Trump's cabinet selections include Fox News All-Stars Pete Hegseth, Tulsi Gabbard, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Lee Zeldin. And <laughs> And look who the White House has added to their landscaping crew. <laughs> Let's hope his wig doesn't blow off. <laughs> Special effects galore. Whoopi Goldberg claims a bakery turned down her birthday order due to her political views. Come on now, what bakery turns down an order for a crumb cake the size of a waterbed? And a 77-year-old slice of cake from Queen Elizabeth's the second's wedding to Prince Philip was auctioned off for $2,800. It's the best $2,800 I've ever spent, said one man. <laughs> was it necessary? All right. So Republicans have taken the House, cementing power across Congress and the White House. All right, calm down. <laughs> This says Donald Trump just nominated four more cabinet members. He's putting a cabinet together so fast, he's like Jesus with a power tool. Each represents part of the MAGA alliance that either comes off as impressive or downright shocking. But that's the nature of the pirate ship. You get all sorts, and as long as they're rowing in the right direction, they're all aboard. Meanwhile, Trump and Biden's meetup at the White House revealed a glee among both of them that even the bitter, wound-licking media couldn't deny. But I think Biden was just happy to spend time with anyone who isn't trying to put a sheet over his head. <laughs> so why is there such a feeling of optimism? It's the difference between wanting and deciding. In 2016, there were things Trump wanted to be the president, to have an impact, to move Michelle Obama's weight set to the basement. Eight years later, though, the wanting has turned to deciding, not just for him, but for Americans, too, because we've decided it's time for a big change. This should have happened four years ago, but that election was about as secure as the sex swing in Chris Christie's bedroom. Oh, my God. It's like the whole country's transitioning, except we're getting our balls back. See, we all want stuff, but there's a point when you have to decide. Yes, I'm going to make my bed. Yes, I'm doing push-ups. Yes, I'm finally getting that One Direction tattooed laser off my back. <laughs> Been selling it on eBay. So this was more than just an election. It's a transformational moment, like Jackie Robinson allowed to play Major League Baseball, or women being allowed to vote, or Ilhan Omar saying I do to her brother. <laughs> We decided as a country to move forward, and that means no more blaming the people today for the misdeeds of their ancestors. That's like arresting my great-grandparents because I'm criminally good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> the Dems were looking backward while doing things ass-backward, and they got dumped like I did with Taylor Swift. <laughs> you would, too. She snores like Andre the Giant with a sinus infection.
But so many people are taking this personally as if it's a rejection of their entire way of thinking. Now, truly, I want Democrats to feel better. I'm tired of seeing Rachel Maddow weeping at Home Depot. <laughs> and so many in the media are miserable. And imagine being that distraught and not having your own hair to pull out. <laughs> but the only way to get over it is to get out of your own head. Forget about identity. Embrace the world around you, family, friends, the people you see as you go about your day. Turn anxiety into curiosity. Instead of worrying about how tomorrow affects you, become curious about how you can affect tomorrow. Research shows that people who dwell on themselves experience more depression. But people who turn outward replace that anguish with curiosity. It's why I installed hidden cameras in the Fox and Friends bathroom. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, identity politics is just a fancy word for me. What do I want? What hurts my feelings? Obsessing over your identity feeds your ego and starves you of precious connections. No wonder a political defeat feels like a wound. But remove identity politics and the ego shrinks like Rachel Levine's nuts in a cold plunge. <laughs> I mean, compare Trump supporters to their opposites. RFK, Musk, Tulsi, Rogan, Tucker, Vivek. They're all curious, adventurous types with outside interests. They surf, falcon, hunt, fly fish, leave dead bears in Central Park. <laughs> but they have no time for self-obsession. They literally do not think about themselves. Unlike the noted never-Trumpers who have wounded egos tattooed on their foreheads. Kinzinger, Cheney, Morning Joe. Geraldo's freaking out so bad the state took custody of his mustache. <laughs> Just look at the most unhinged outbursts on cable TV. I think there are a lot of families out there who don't believe boys should play girls' sports. They're not boys. I'm not going to listen to transphobia at this table. I am not going to listen to the point you call a trans girl a boy. Are you going to allow me to finish my explanation? When you use a word that's a slur, I'm going to interrupt. That's not how it is. They're not boys. They wouldn't give these 13 service members' families the time of day. The time of day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but Donald Trump hates veterans. He called them suckers and losers. What is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny, over a message of inclusiveness? So talk about emotional wounds, because their outrage is rooted in identity. But we're different. When my guy loses, and he has, my life goes on. I get up the next day and I get dressed like I always do by a team of Slovakian migrants. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. She enjoys fast rides and discussing homicide. Go host about number Emily Cabana. <laughs> He's not high, that's just his face. After comedian Jim Brewer. She's just been nominated for Secretary of Soup. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Cat too. And he brushes his teeth with a floor buffer. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA woman. <laughs> Emily, things are happening so fast. Every time there's a nomination, then there's another one, then there's another one. And I just, I have a, I, I mean, I know that I'm experiencing post-election euphoria, and, but I feel when I'm walking around, it's out there. It's the animal spirit. You can feel it all over. How about you? What do you say? Totally. That you probably need a restraining order. <laughs> that yeah, no, I feel it all over too. I feel it everywhere. It's electric. And obviously maybe it's because we work here at Fox, but I feel it everywhere too. I feel it around where I live. And I think it's also really palpable the dejection that is based on no actual foundation, but only those identity politics that you're talking about mm -hmm. because we're here in New York City. And the, the biggest irony to me is, is there's, there's two things about their dejection. Number one, if they really cared about those identities, then wouldn't they see that, number one, all of these policies truly lifts all boats? If they really cared about the plight of the underserved in these communities, well, then hang on, because it's going to look real good from here on out. And number two, where's the applause and the recognition for, for example, the first female White House chief of staff that mm -hmm. President Trump just installed, for the barriers that he breaks on a daily basis that he never gets any credit for because it's the wrong side? And the second thing is that this is their legacy. 
And this is what makes eating this cake taste so good to me. That, for example, Nancy Pelosi saying, I feel terrible. This was your legacy. This was your fault. The reason that the American people rose up and hit a hat trick and trifected in the Republican Party is because all of you guys failed. You made our seats, our, our streets, terribly unsafe. You made people, people died under your watch. People lost their livelihoods, they lost their businesses, they lost their scholarships, their hope for a future. They lost a lot of things under your watch. So for you to feel terrible, you should feel terrible about those things, not simply that the wrong side won. And the fact that now, you know, I'm always ranting and raving about our tax dollars. The amount of waste mm -hmm. that the bloated administration, the, the weaponization of the regulatory state, the fact that that's all coming to an end, mm -hmm. I could not be more thrilled. I agree with you. I'm, I'm skipping down the sidewalk every day now. That's, that's right. Right. It's great. Jim, a lot of people are upset. You have to be kind of vindicated because I've been following you in the last couple of years. You, you take a lot of uh, Well, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> You know, it started with the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, then it started with going after, you know, Biden. Just the fact that he's been dead <laughs> since he showed up. Yes. I, I, I still, to this day, there's no way you can convince me that's the real Joe Biden. That's, that's a remote control or a guy in a mask or what it is. But it's really nice to know that finally common sense is is allowed to be spoken once again. I don't have yeah. to go, well, I, I don't know if like people should be dressing like whores in front of four-year-old kids. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> you phobic disgusting. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> when, I, you know, I know growing up in Long Island, some guys with a banana hat in front of the kids, <laughs> we didn't call it education. I mean <laughs> 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 it's so, you know, it's so true because every I really do think everybody quietly was disgusted by so many things, but they couldn't say anything. They couldn't say nothing. Yeah, yeah. It still feels good to just now I got nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cat RFK. What do you say? That just happened a few hours ago, and I made a rhyme out of it. Mm -hmm. That's how clever I can be. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are going crazy about it, but actually Obama was considering him in 2008 for EPA. Mm -hmm. And also, just all, I can't with all these people that are like, oh, our precious standards of government. It's yeah. like, what standards are you talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm also, like, who cares if it got way weirder, quite frankly? Right. I don't care. If he doesn't get through, why not Marianne Williamson? Yes. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm like, she doesn't have any expertise in health. Okay, but she's 72 and she looks great. Yes. <laughs> so she, she could be the Department of Passion. She clearly knows something. <laughs> I, it just, I, there's, pe people really are freaking out. I, was, I saw a Vanity Fair headline that called it um, a brick <laughs> scary cabinet. It's like, hey guys, who's the president right now? Yeah. Right yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> like we don't really even have a president right now, mm -hmm. so I really don't. I'm, it's not going to be so easy for me to get wrapped up. And do I, I, I love every single one of these picks. No, but I, who? And yeah, and like we don't have a president right now. Mm -hmm. he, we don't. Nobody. What is he's not doing anything? Yeah. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. Let's just get weird with it. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> goes back to the. Uh, <laughs> The analogy of the pirate ship, or it's like, yeah. it feels like it's like it's an authentic Expendables or Avengers. Tyrus, what movie would you? Mm. Mm -hmm. What movie? Oh man, uh, this. The Dirty Dozen. No, this uh, this isn't a movie. This is a, a war is about to. Let's hold off on the soiree and the partying, uh, <laughs> because he's going to attempt to drain the swamp with this group of individuals, which means the fight that's coming back is massive because you are going to, to try to take apart an establishment who has fleeced the American people for generations. Yeah. Senators didn't, they're, these career senators with their gold bars and their closets and their, and their monies and being able to, cousins and first cousins and lobbyist sons getting jobs and places and being pushed to be in charge of energy in China or Ukraine, all of that's gonna come to an end. And you think they're just gonna be like, okay, Mm -hmm. You know, so it's going to be, if he's picking these people, every one of them has an ax to grind. And there's a reason for that, because this is going to be the fight for the American. It's one thing to get in. It's another thing to actually make change. 
he's got the House, he's got the Senate. So all this is great, and we're all fired up. But if he walks in there and doesn't do term limits in that first week, because that's how you stop all this stuff. That's how you stop the career. You got to hit the term limits, and then you unleash the dogs. And then you find out how much money they've been stealing from the American people. Eventually, the people who donated to the Democratic Party to raise it up to a billion dollars minus 20 are going to be like, they're going to find out that they were being conned by the government, by the progressive government. So that's not, they're just going to lay down and take it. It's going to be terrible. Pelosi's sad today because she's trying to figure out who she's going to take out first, who they're going to come after first. So he's smart in picking guys like Gates and guys because they're already flawed and they already have their issues, but he's coming for your job. Yeah, it's So it, it's, it's game on, but be, be alert. It's the 1977 Oakland Raiders. Yes. Yeah. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.